my name is Daniel, Daniel Luria, the Executive Director of uh, Atiret Koanim. And uh, on behalf of the organization, we welcome everyone here. We have a, uh, a packed two days. What we're going to do now is to go to a place called Bet Sion, which I'll explain very shortly. Uh, then we're going into the old city to uh, Bet Wittenberg, uh, connection with Ariel Sharon and uh, Mark Twain. Then we have a visit to uh, both chief rabbis, then the Knesset. So we're, we're going to be moving. Just to understand where we are, um, this is the Holy Basin. And if Arafat Yamakshamoy would have said yes to the deal that Barak offered him, we would not be walking here today. Every single Jew would be within one or two kilometers from every Arab that had a gun, the whole of Jerusalem. But Arafat said no. Abu Dis is behind the Mount of Olives, and the concept was to grab Jerusalem and link up with Ramallah to the north, they'd left him to the south. Thank God that's not happening, and part of the work of the organization to have Jewish life on the Mount of Olives, a Jewish neighborhood. There's now Jews living in the original city of David. There's Jews living in the Yemenite village, sadly under fire. That's in the Yemenite village, city of David, Mount of Olives, <coughs> all forming part of what we call the Shield of Jerusalem. We are now in this sector, which is right very close to the old Jewish quarter, today's Muslim quarter, and this building here is called, uh, now it's called Bet Sion. When Aram was in, uh, the Leban in Lebanon, the Lebanon War, his uh, group of soldiers managed to kill a Hezbollah fighter. And uh, the Hezbollah fighter ended up being someone from Iran that had on him a, a band above his head saying Al-Quds, uh, Jerusalem, free Jerusalem. Uh, the missiles, by the way, that were landing in Mishkatik, we there a few years ago to see all the leftover missiles. So many of them had Al-Quds, which is Jerusalem, written on the missiles. Their intention was never Gush Katif. They've still got this aim to try and get Jerusalem. And here you had an Iranian fighter joining the Hezbollah just in order to liberate Jerusalem. And Aaron made a decision at that point in time that uh, he has to do something that he is driven to do for Jerusalem. And while he was sitting next to the cedars of Lebanon, uh, somewhere in the forest, he chipped away from a tree and uh, made actually Emil Zazar that came from Lebanon to make a, his own statement. We came in from the Flowers Gate. There are 35,000 <laughs> residents of the old city today. There are 5,000 Jews. 4,000 live in what's called the Jewish Quarter, or the Jewish Ninth, and another 1,000, the work of the organization, in the old Jewish Quarter. Because one of the people who bought and lived in this massive building here was a guy called Yaakov Valero. He was a Turkish uh, banker, aristocrat, a religious, uh, he was a rabbi also. This was his private residence. But as we know, the pogroms and the riots forced the Jews either to lose out altogether, lease their house, or in some cases, like here, sold it. But 23 years ago, Jewish concerns managed to buy it back. It took 23 years so that the Arabs who were living there were no longer the protected tenants. Today, this is once again in Jewish hands, but there's a massive renovation project which is required here in order to add four families, which will change very significantly the whole area. Just recently exposed that one of the buildings that we acquired back, that Ariel Sharon ended up buying an apartment in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to Mark Twain, you should know that you're also sitting in the apartment owned by Ariel Sharon. Uh, Ariel Sharon and his wife Lily did something rather uh, unique and not so acceptable in those years by making a statement to say the Jews have a right to live anywhere in Jerusalem, especially in the heart of Jerusalem and even more so in an old Jewish building. Uh, the building itself was owned by a gentleman called Rabbi Moshe Wittenberg. Twenty families were living here. Unfortunately, with the pogroms and the riots, the Jews were kicked out of here. Not one of them came back to live here after the first set of riots. What happened was, uh, Hungarian Jews then moved into the building. But when there was the second set of riots, also instigated by Hajj Amin El Husseini, that itself is another story because his, uh, if you remember, his private house was acquired by the Moscovich family. This apartment belongs to Ariel Sharon. The apartment above, I'm not going to go into the whole story, was dedicated to Rocky Klein, a major general who dived on the grenade, saves all the soldiers around him in Lebanon, and the family who acquired that wanted to dedicate it to his name, so it's in his name. Today there are seven Jewish families and two Arab families living in a closed courtyard. 
exceptionally significant. Out of the book, three chapters here, so happen just to open this page by chance, but three chapters here are dedicated to this hotel because it was the number one hotel in uh, Jerusalem. This was also a picture taken in the courtyard, right here. So, sir, it's a bit heavy to schlep, as we say. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Larry Gordon, you five towns Jewish Open for a really nice extended visit. And I think I expected that they would just be uh, almost inconsolable. But the strength that they're getting from people's prayers and knowing that the support all over the world, I think, has given them uh, a renewed strength and, and optimism and hope. And they're seeing how Israel is responding valiantly, and putting so many resources and assets to try to find those boys. It's, uh, and then Kotel Katan is uh, an area where many bar mitzvot uh, are held. And we have to do a lot more and should be glorified the same way as the regular Kotel. I mean, why not? It's, it's part of the Kotel that people don't know. And in, that area has to be, like in, in America, we make these properties sanctified. We, we make them uh, Kadosh. And it becomes a whole different ballgame. You can see that this is my family. This is my wife, my uh, seven children, mm. and my Grand two grandchildren. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. Hope to uh, see you again. Anyway, all right. Thanks. In the White House. I just get a picture. Obama did not talk much. Obama did not speak 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 much. Obama did not the message back to America. Well done, tremendous. the והוא התאכזב, הוא התאכזב מאוד מהם כל הרציחות שלהם, כל האכזריות צריך שיהיה קריאה גדולה בכל העולם well, the message we want to try to remind people in the United States is that children are not soldiers. You don't attack children. And that that's, that's uh, even for the most monstrous of terrorists, that should be off limits. Dr. Joe Frager, who is chairman of the board, Shalom Derek Kohanim, Paniba Pagorga, Rabbi Kofel, Matitan, who are all I may win. <laughs> At least uh, pray a blessing. Thank you. First of all, I want to say many things to say about my, my talk to me. I want to say that uh, I'm honored to be his friend. And I would argue that Mike Huckabee is the greatest friend of Israel of any of the major political figures of America. 
and I'll go further. I'll go further and say, if Mike Huckabee was a member of the Knesset, he'd be the Knesset's greatest friend. Uh, in I'm going to say a couple of quick things. First of all, words matter in this uh, era of delegitimization. We should be using the right words, the accurate words that tell the truth, as opposed to the words that the media and our enemies uh, want us to use. <laughs> We should not say Arab-Israeli conflict. There is none. The Jews would have peace with the Arabs in a minute if they would simply do the right things. We should say the Arab war against Israel because that's what it is. <laughs> and stop saying that Jerusalem is holy to Muslims. That is a propaganda lie. The word Jerusalem doesn't appear in the Koran ever. It appears 700 times in our Jewish holy books. No Arab leader visited uh, Eastern Jerusalem when they controlled it from 48 to 67. <laughs> they allowed it to remain a slum. It's not even the appeal of charter. Let's stop acting as if they have some right to Jerusalem. They have no religious, historic, or political right to Jerusalem. And stop acting like we have to make a deal about Jerusalem. I'm sick and tired of their lies about Jerusalem. You know, when I gave a speech about this at a major synagogue in L.A., the rabbi became very angry and said, the Arabs will decide what's holy to them, not you, Mort Klein. <laughs> and I said, well, suppose tomorrow to this rabbi, they decide L.A. is holy to them. We have to give them half of L.A.? There's no basis. And please, let's stop helping BDS by using the word occupation. For God's sakes, there is no occupation. Israel has given away almost half of Judea and Samaria. That's where 99% of the Arabs live. They are running their own lives there, except for security. If they weren't constantly developing terror cells to murder Jews, Israelis wouldn't even have to be in Judea and Samaria in the, in the areas that Israel has given away. And let's make it clear to the world that only of all the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, they comprise only 3% of Judea and Samaria. 3%! The images are all over the place. I wish it were true, but it's not true, and we should make that clear. <laughs> there hasn't been a single new Jewish community built since Oslo began in 1993. Not a single one. There's been Jewish homes built within the boundaries of the legal existing community. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate what, what you do and what you attempt to do. And I'm sorry that our government is making it very difficult for people to build bedrooms. I've often said that if our government would put as much pressure on Iran to stop building bombs as to stop building bedrooms, the world would be a safer place on both ends. My name is Yossi and I'm the Chief Operating Officer. Uh, this is Bao Muhammad. Uh, he's the, uh, the manager of all our Palestinian and Arab uh, employees here in, uh, in this factory and in others. We also have another factory in up north where we employ about 200 uh, Israeli uh, Muslims. And uh, Bahom is actually managing all of them. Bahom is himself a uh, Palestinian Arab uh, and is one of our senior managers. And he's personally working with me for the last, uh, I think, uh, 17 years. So in this factory, this is one of our 22 production locations, but this is by way far the, the largest one. We are building a very big one now up north in the in northern part of the Negev in Lehavim. Uh, uh, but this is the biggest factory we have, and this, actually in this factory we have a lot of different industries. We have uh, plastic injections, we have bottle blowing, metal, we make the cylinder, uh, uh, machining, we make the valve, uh, CO2 uh, filling, uh, sub assemblies, assemblies, all of it here. The flavor factory is down in Ashkelon, okay? And uh, we also have a lot of uh, other factories, part of them uh, in, uh, in China and in USA we have a couple factories, uh, uh, etc. all over the world. In Europe we have a few of them, uh, but this is the most unique among all of them because in this factory, you, and you'll see it as we walk, this is a kind of an island of peace for us. Uh, we employ here uh, 1,100 employees. 
600 out of them are Palestinians, yeah. uh, Palestinian yeah. Authority yeah. citizens. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have the permits to work with us, and we take care of the permits. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, uh, they work with us for a few years now. Some of them for six years, um, and they are so happy working with us that they, among their uh, extended family, they offer their extended family, hey, uh, there is an open job in uh, in uh, Soda Stream. You want to come and join? They bring their their own families and uh, uncles and uh, whoever from the extended family. And that goes to the other side as well, because they make here like five or six times more in a salary than they do in the Palestinian Authority. The average salary in the Palestinian Authority is 1,200 shekels. A month or a week? A month, okay? The mayor of Nablus probably earns 1,800 shekels. Our employees here, they earn about eight or 9,000 shekels with the additional hours and shifts that they do. That's six, seven times way uh, 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 higher than the Palestinian Authority. Also here, they joined us as a, just as a line employees, and some of them are uh, uh, department <coughs> managers, shift managers, shift managers <laughs> and then they make much more money than what I told you. Yeah. Okay? That's the job I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing here on the, uh, the most important and oldest uh, cemetery it's still functioning, uh, although I tell people if you can come to Harazetim, it's better to come here uh, uh, vertical rather than uh, than horizontal. But uh, close to 150,000 graves are here on Harazetim. Uh, this is, like I said, the oldest Jewish cemetery in the world that dates back 3,000 years. There are caves in the area that date back to that period. Uh, the only Prime Minister of Israel actually was buried here and not in Har Herzl is uh, Menachem Begin. It's called the, uh, sorry, the Mercy Gate. For some reason in English it's always referred to as the Golden Gate, but in Hebrew it's known as Shar HaRachamim. About a thousand years ago the Arabs who didn't want the Messiah to come, they put a little cemetery, an Arab cemetery in front of the gate and block it, thinking they can stop the Messiah. The stability in the Middle East was going to be destroyed and there was not going to be stability if that was going to be approved. Ultimately it was approved. And because at the time the Moskvich family that helped the Teres Kornim, today there are 110 families, mind you, quietly living, more or less, in the neighborhood, on the left hand side is Ras al Amud, that Jewish neighborhood, those two newer buildings, 110 families today on the Mount of Olives. It's called. So uh, it's called Ma'ale Hazetim, but if you look up on the internet, you'll have to see, if you look at Moskvich name or Ras al Amud, Teres Kornim, you'll get a whole uh, host of uh, information, including this internet site that says, WWW stop Moscovich now. It didn't make a difference because uh, the neighborhood still exists. And, uh, Daniel, that, Daniel, uh, Daniel. Uh, Governor Huckabee was there for the dedication of uh, stage two at the, uh, the time. Stop using the word West Bank. Menachem Begin came to America. He came to America. He begged the Jewish community to stop using the word West Bank. That was a term made up by the Arabs to dejuniaize the area of Yehud and Shamron. And we should be using Judea and Samaria. Never use the term uh, West Bank. <laughs> Never use the term settlements, for God's sake. These are Jewish communities in Yehud and Shamron. They are not settlements, which makes it look like they're a bunch of tents on, the <coughs> on top of a hill somewhere. <laughs> and let's call it racism. When people are saying that the, the 350,000 Jews, Jews in Judea and Samaria should not be allowed to live there, why on earth can't 350,000 Jews live among a million Arabs when one and a half million Arabs live among six million Jews in Israel, anyone who says Jews can't live there is basically a I'd like to express on behalf of uh, every American our heartfelt concern for the Frankel family. Uh, the kidnapping of Naftali Frankel, who is a joint U.S. and Israeli citizen, just a boy coming home from school, is an outrage to any uh, thoughtful person anywhere on the planet. And we pray for the Frankel family. I had the privilege on Sunday night of meeting with both Rachel and Avi. Naftali's parents and they're wonderful, beautiful people. And no mother deserves to put her head on her pillow at night not knowing where her child is. And this is why we join with the people of the world, the rational and the sane people of the world, and ask that uh, if anyone has information, please uh, do it in the name of God, do it in the name of decency, 
and let's bring these boys home. Mm -hmm. Come Hi, Daniel. Uh, I went on birth a decade ago. I still remember it like it was yesterday. What you're doing here is so important. I just wanted to say, you know, God bless you, sir. And, uh,